Welcome back to another tutorial. Well, this time we're just going to have a look at the most recent beta, 1.6.7, and we'll see how that compares to the previous version. There's been a lot of change to the uh, exporting routine, so um, I'd like some feedback on that. But just a, an example of how things have changed, we're just going to plant a whole bunch of trees um, down in this area. So there we can have a look at how many trees. That's 10,000. Max is out at 10,000. Um, and then I'm just going to, uh, for sake of seeing how things are grouped together, just make a couple of other plants there. So if I select all by doing a control A, we can see there's 30,000 objects there. So 10,000 here, 10,000 there, 10,000 there. Um, let's export that and see how RTB groups things. Okay, so I loaded up that uh, objects only. I, I left the, the terrain out of it, but I just loaded up the objects, which are, are the trees, um, and uh, Racetrack Builder firstly looks at the LOD of the uh, objects that you're exporting. So uh, when we look at LOD, that's when it's going to disappear out of your scene, uh, 2,000 meters, 2 kilometers, um, and that um, when it enters your scene. So um, if you've got uh, complex objects, you can have multiple LODs. Uh, for these simple objects, you've just got the, the one set. So based on that value there, RTB then decides how big these squares are. So if we're planting grass or grass, um, then your LODs are going to be smaller, uh, lower, because grass is... is uh, not as big as trees, so it doesn't need to pop into your scene as soon. And so these squares, these grid patterns, is how RTB used to divide things up in uh, the, the current version 1.6.6. .6. But in the new beta version, um, I've changed the way that happens. So we, we're using um, K means clustering. Um, so at the moment you see what happens is you, you get a bunch of trees and you'll notice sometimes the groups are fairly small. Um, it really dep depends on where that line, the grid lines are cutting through the scene. And you'll see over here they're, they're also popped into some smaller groups. Well, that one's included with that square. Um, so it does break it up but it does it in a fairly rudimentary way. Okay, so this time I've exported the scene uh, with RTB 1.6.7 and it uses the k-means clustering. So we'll see there, no longer do things fall into a grid shape pattern, it's a, a little bit more organic almost. Um, and um, so the, no longer did we, we have a, a group here that was split across this gap here. So these objects are all grouped together and this object here is grouped together so it just kind of combines things in, in a, a little bit more tightly packed way rather than just splitting into a, a grid so the other thing to be aware of is the the way rtb groups all of these things together has a lot to do with this lod out value so if you've used a lot of different objects from a lot of different x packs and they're all using different LOD out values, they're going to be grouped um, in their own small groups. Um, there's nothing RTB can do about that. Same if you use the same object um, and you've just changed that value just slightly, that guarantees that all of these have to be put in their own separate group. They can't be grouped um, with all the others because they have that different value. Um, so that's something to be aware of, and also the uh, it, it, RTB splits by materials, so the same materials. If you've got um, objects uh, using different materials, they'll be split into their own groups as well. Um, so uh, try and use the um, one set of materials, and, and um, you know if you can, uh, if you can make out that image there, all of those trees are actually using the same texture. Um, so that's a, a neat trick. Uh, to reduce the amount of different materials and textures that are in your scene. Okay, the second last thing I'll mention is the ability to overwrite the export name. Um, it's been requested to do this. One of the most popular things to do is to give the trees this sort of name and a set of course treats them differently and um, casts shadows and lighting on them uh, in a specific way. Um, so that's in there. 
And lastly, uh, most of the export routines have changed. So um, it's uh, sometimes you were falling through tracks um, uh, if there were too many vertices or terrain, same thing. And part of the problem is this little uh, function here. And I still need to fix this up slightly. Um, so at the moment, this large triangle here, even though it's near the track, is not actually being cut by the track. So it, it's not being tagged um, as drivable. So if you were to drive off the edge of that track and onto that triangle, it would dive into the abyss. Um, do try this beta out. Um, certainly lots of uh, changes there. And I do want to be sure that it's working for everybody before we go further. Thanks again for watching.